Um, I did almost quit drag at one point to go drive trucks. I wanted to be a truck driver because my ex-boyfriend, uh, we were like good friends. He lived somewhere else. And we talk all the time, and he drives trucks. And that was just so amazing to me. When I talked to him, he was always in these different states, different cities. You know, I probably would be a millionaire by now. Because I do know the more trucks you have, you make more money. And I would have been working but saving my money to buy a truck and then using my truck to make money and then buying another truck to make more money. So I would have had a fleet of trucks and a fleet of drivers and just sitting on my derriere watching The Young and the Restless eating pork chops in the morning. We are in Hamburger Mary's right here in West Hollywood, one of my places I've been many, many, many years. It's about 15, 16 years. Let me show you around. This is where we perform, and this is like the tables, and it'd be full of people here. We perform up and down this aisleway here. This is like our little center stage where we come through. Behind here is the dressing room, and we would come out of this curtain, or we would come out of another curtain, which is some stairs. Uh, these stairs right here is a workout in its own self. This is my little section over here. When I'm here, I work in this section here. Sometimes I get up here. Icky, icky. No, I don't do the DJ, honey. I put my wigs up here sometimes and the other girls and, oh, I don't know who's this is it. Oh, baby, she need to get washed. And I can look over here to see if anybody's out there and I can say, hmm, let me do Shania Twain because it may be a country type folks out there and I can see if they're really young and I say, well, let me do Nicki Minaj. I think she need to go in the trash. I think she done been holed out so long. Can't save her. What happened to this mirror over here? I don't know. It ain't, <laughs> this is not my mirror. Oh, it's a money in here. Look at that. See, I don't steal. I do human hair, synthetic hair, whatever hair it is that's gonna make me look how I need to look for the stage, I wear it. I don't really have a favorite. I do love my Dora. You know, my little Bob, my Dora the Explorer. Like, I can wear that any color, any time, anywhere. It's gonna work regardless. <laughs> always make my way this way um, to get to point number two, do a little jumper jacks or a high kick. I ain't gonna kick that high. And I would do like a front uh, flip forward. Um, then the people like, oh my God, out of array and all that good stuff and turn around. And Sometimes I would do like a, another front flip or I may do two of them. Who knows how I feel? Cause I'm- uh-huh, I do doubles, sometimes triples. You know, sometimes I had to do that because the people are out. And then we, I make my way around there. They get sloppy drunk off of these. Now this is the smaller uh, version of it. These get you drunk as hell too. So you have to be careful when you come to Mary's for brunch because if you get one of these, it's a possibility you're gonna be like the people we've seen before. I've seen people drink, they lock themselves up in the bathroom, they get sick. One girl even peed, another girl sh Can I say sh Okay, <laughs> another girl sh A man got drunk. I mean, I seen everything that happens here. They still made it home safely. But drinking out of this, one of these right here, you gonna get lit. I mean, lit la la. So you have to be very careful when you come to Mary's and order one of these legs for like celebrations, cause somebody gonna have to uh, carry you out of here. And I hope it's your friends because we're not gonna do it. I've been here for years and I never got into the drama with any of the queens here. We, um, I say we all get along very well. I, I would say that because we get girls coming in, coming out, and there's never none of that drama, fussy, fighty situation. Not at Mary's, not here anyway. Somebody trying to get reservations. 
They better try to get them to see me. And I've been feeling so bad lately because we do the brunches, but I always have to leave Sunday by the third brunch. And I'm tipping out of here with my bag. They're like, where are you going? Bitch, I'm going to Oakland. <laughs> I'm sorry, I know they don't post it, but yeah. It's busy. Yeah, thank the goodness. I think everywhere I started back in 93, that's still around, I still work at. You know, I go in, I do my job, I show up on time, I don't get in no drama, I don't get wasted and do stuff I shouldn't do. Girls who uh, book the show, like Jules and Psychedella, they've been keeping me working for years and we still doing what we love. We have a good time. We still look cute. We still, <laughs> we still look good and stuff. Yeah. <laughs> the truth of drag is when you're in the back and your zipper bust and you have to sew yourself up or get somebody to sew you up in there. Um, all the communication, all the teaching, all the learning that we do behind the stage. When we're on stage, that's something totally different. Everything is in the back. That's where we hear things, we learn things, we help each other out. And, and Drag Race doesn't show that. It doesn't show um, girls learning songs or going shopping for stockings or shoes and buying wigs. It doesn't show everything that drag is. It just kind of put icing on a cake that's not all the way done. My childhood was a lot of fun. Um, I have a slew of cousins, so I grew up with a lot of family members. Um, we did a lot of dancing, a lot of singing, a lot of uh, playing football, tetherball, hopscotch, baseball. Um, I had a really good upbringing and a lot of laughs from what I can remember. You driving while I'm already f***ed up, so bitch, I crashed in my back seat for a couple of hours, and I, ooh. Um, I never set out to do it. I just say what I feel, and and just people just you know gravitated to it. And I've been the same way for years. Um, people always have told me I say some funny stuff or never anything that I wanted to or I tried to set out to do. It just happened. Wash your <laughs> women, please wash the. <laughs> it is summertime, and your just thank baby. Any flowers. You know, I never had a problem with my family when I came out. It wasn't none of that negative or they saying, oh, you just, they didn't care. They did not care at all. And to know that my younger cousins and my nieces and nephews are happy to tell people, oh, my, uh, my cousin or my uncle is a drag queen, and that's who that is, said, and I oop. That, like, felt really good to know and see. Uh, we was at Chuck E. Cheese at my cousin's uh, birthday party. And I always buy, you know, I buy the pizza. I take care of the tokens and stuff like that. And the guy, the manager, he was just like, looking, he wasn't saying nothing. I said, boyfriend, are you there? Like, what is wrong? Are you okay? And he was like, wait, are you Jasmine Masters? And I was like, yes. And my cousins was there, my auntie and everybody. So and I was like, yeah. He was like, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, we love you. So. He did something like this, and like six people came out with their phones. So I'm taking pictures with the workers at Chuck E. Cheese. They give us everything for free, which is good. <laughs> we just left them a good tip. But um, I was so happy to see my family be able to see how people react to me. So if they had any uh, doubts in their mind about me dressing up like a woman, they could see, oh, no, people love me. Like, you know, it's all good. It's not a bad thing. Um, I think I started doing more self-care once I uh, lost my best friends. Um, they all three of them had passed away, two of them being my cousin and one just being my best friend. And I was kind of out on my own. Um, I've always been very self-conscious about what I did and how I protected myself and carried myself. But when, I, when they was gone, I didn't have nobody else there. You know, like my right hand guy or whatnot. Um, then I just started noticing I was getting kind of I don't want to say depressed, but I was feeling it. 
like I was really sad. And I just had to snap out of it. So I played some gospel music and built myself back up. So now I'm really into doing self-care stuff, um, going to the beach, listening to the water, um, walking around the malls or riding a bike somewhere, driving on the freeways. I do stuff like that because it keeps me calm. Bree, okay, Brittany and Bree. Okay. <laughs> Should I take off my shoes? Oh, uh, please get comfortable. Okay. Yeah, yeah. You've got a pillow, blanket, anything you need to Oh, get okay, a pillow and a blanket. Yeah. Have you okay. ever been to a sound bath before? <clears throat> no, I have not. Oh, okay, yeah. It's it's very fitting. We're on to your first. Um, you know, I'm always looking for something new to keep me calm and relaxed and uh to keep a positive mind. And I always heard about the sound bath. I never done it before, so I was very uh, happy to try it. Back and the upper back. Relaxing the shoulders and the shoulder blades, the upper arms, elbows, forearms, wrist, hands, and fingers. fall asleep a little bit. I caught myself snoring. Um, <laughs> I said, oh, I want to do that. But I was really relaxed. I felt really at peace. Um, the sounds of the the music that I heard and the peaceful of the, of the meadows and the water, all of that was just so relaxing. When you let yourself go, you really got to get into it and let yourself go. And I did really just take it all for what it was worth. I'm, you know, I like to take a shower and or a bath, and that relaxes me with a candle, maybe some Sade playing or something like that. Um, but to do something different and to see that it does work, because it did work, um, was amazing for me to try out. Even when you fall asleep, your mm -hmm. body is still experiencing all the benefits. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> and we like to say these aren't just pretty little sounds yeah. that you hear. This is real vibrational medicine. So, oh, wow. yeah, strike the bowl and then just play around. So lightly strike and then play around. And then it'll just start to get louder and louder. Oh, they can the get music really the loud. Do it, do it changes as you go lower? The sound yeah. sounds? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Sound, yeah sound They're the, tuned the to different, yeah, yeah. Two different frequencies. Oh, wow. And they have different notes as well. What those sound like? Oh, you do feel it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this one's just a striking, so you don't need to... Go around the circles. Yeah. All right, now. Sound and vibration is, you know, since we live in a vibrational universe, we are vibrational beings. Mm -hmm. Sound is, I believe, is the quickest way to get us back into balance. Yeah. The sound thing, that was amazing because I seen it done on TV, but I never thought I would really go... I didn't know where to go look for that, nor did I try to uh, Google it or find it. Um, so that's, that was a new thing that I'm going to do for self-care. Other than that, drink a lot of water and smoke weed. <laughs> you want to lay down? Do you want us to put some of the bowls on? You could just experience that for a little bit. Okay, I hope I don't pass gas though, because it's, <laughs> because it's like vibrating through my arm. Just imagine on my stomach, like, like I'm sorry. It depends on what the new things are. I, I, I don't mind trying things, um, but it does depend on what it is. A lot of things I'm not doing anymore because I'm like, I'm 47, I'm almost 50. I'm not about to do no to hurt myself or something that I don't think I can heal properly from. Um, some things I know I'm terrified of, anything really high up, I'm afraid of heights. So roller coasters, I don't do anymore. I had enough of those. Um, but you'll do a double front flip on a bar floor. Yeah, because I'm lower to the ground than I am way high up. <laughs> Did you always eat chicken tenders with utensils? Um, when I'm in drag, yes. 
<laughs> when I'm in drag, I use the utensils for my food. If I'm not in drag, I use my fingers. It's just having all the food and stuff underneath them, and you got to do all of that extra stuff, and I hate that. 70, what, 72 concerts now? You've been a 72 Patti LaBelle? Yeah, I've been going since I was 15. Um, well, the beginning is I've always been a fan of hers. I don't know why. I just remember one time watching her on TV, and she was singing. And she just started flying across the floor, and she kicked her shoes off, and she rolled them on the ground. And I was maybe five or six during that time. And there was just something about her that just stuck to me. And I felt like my hair stuck, uh, stick up on the back of my neck, and I got real shaky. Um, so ever since then, I've just been a fan of hers. So when I got about 15, I did a drag show to go to a concert. And that was my start for drag, because I won. And then after that, I just knew whatever I wanted to do, I wanted to have money to go see her in concert. She see me now, She's that's Jasmine, and she tell people that I'm a big fan of hers and I dress up like her. She called me on stage to do Lady Marmalade with her all the time, in drag, out of drag. It's a lot of videos of that on YouTube of me dressed up, not dressed up. When I was on Drag Race at the finale, she sent me a video congratulating me about being on the show. So it's, it's crazy, it's kind of, you know, a dream come true. Um, every time I meet her, it takes me back to when I first had a chance to hug her. When I was maybe about 16 at a concert in the back, in the back of the auditorium. And she talked to about 150 of us and gave everybody a hug and gave everybody their time. And I peed a little bit because <laughs> I was so nervous and happy. So I think I go a lot um, because it's like a drug. Like they say drugs or something when you first get that first high you keep wanting to get that back. Every time I go see her in concert, I get that high of seeing her. We all be got. I don't care about your race. I don't care about your size. I don't care how wide your mother spread open, but we are all we got. Can we please get it back to heaven? Because if not, we're going to our own because we think we better than each other. We're not. And I understand if I don't go to work, I don't have money. If I don't have money, I can't eat and pay my bills. Um, I think the same thing I've been doing for years on, I'm doing today. I haven't changed anything. I'm always there for work. You know, I know the difference between work and play. And I just been professional with the job that I chose from back then to now. There's nothing a person in this world have that I want. I'm so happy with myself. I'm very content with myself. I love myself. Um, I don't care if you have a million dollars and I have $12. I don't want your money. I just need your friendship. And if you can't be my friend, then stay out of my face, you know? Um, and I tell people, if you ever tell someone, oh, yeah, I ran into Jasmine or I met her and she was rude or she was mean or she went off on me, tell them why I went off on you. Because don't, that don't come out until you do something to me. I'm very open, very loving, very, hey, you know, I had so many friends in high school. None of us was the same. I hung out with the, what they say, the nerds. I hung out with the cool people. I hung out with the people that wore the black, you know, the golf look. I just had friends all, all around. So somebody would have to make me upset for me to say something bad. So if somebody ever said, oh, yeah, she means she this. No, I'm not. I don't care what you have, honey. We just going to be friends. If I could just stay happy and stay um, not wanting or needing anything, that would be good for me. I don't require much. I just want to stay happy and healthy. Yeah. That's why I go do sound baths and stuff like that. <laughs> That's my meditation. That's my health right there. So growing up, I played football, basketball, baseball, tetherball, hopscotch, spades, uh, high go seek, high go get it. <laughs> and I get the tater tots where I have them add different stuff to it. I make my own menu and stuff up. I say, give me some tater tots, add some sour cream or guacamole. I don't like sour cream, but guacamole, some bacon, some lettuce, you know, some onions and jalapenos. I make my own stuff up. 
here, you know, I don't really get too much, too many things off the menu that's on the menu. I just create my own stuff.